Hey, what's up language lovers? I'm Aaron from Finktum Languages, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at a hilarious clip from The Office through the eyes of a linguist or someone who studies human language scientifically. The characters in this clip have a debate about the correct usage of who versus whom, which honestly confuses a lot of us. And I'm going to explain some common misconceptions about these words and explain the correct way to use them at the end of the video. If you want to see more videos about linguistics, be sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you like the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. How long until you actually get this presentation ready? Why don't you honest do the estimate? presentation? Because I, mean, I don't you want know how to do what it. What I really want, honestly, Michael, is for you to know it so that you can communicate it to the people here, to your clients, to whomever. Oh, okay. What? It's whoever, not whomever. No, it's whomever. No, whomever is never actually right. Well, sometimes it's right. So I just want to take a minute to pause the clip here and say, why would there be a word in our language that's never actually right? And how is that even a word then? But my main takeaway from what he said here is that this is an example of a native speaker who doesn't understand a grammar rule in the language that he speaks fluently. And there are two explanations for when this happens. The first is that the rule might be implicitly understood by native speakers, and we follow the rule without knowing it. So you were never taught this rule, you just picked it up from your parents subconsciously. For example, you know the difference between the words we and us, but it's doubtful that your parents ever taught you that we is the subject and us is the object. And maybe you can't explain this rule yourself, but you heard your parents using this word as you were growing up, and now it just sounds right. The second reason a native speaker might not understand a rule in their language is that it's a prescriptive rule, not a descriptive rule. A prescriptive rule is a rule that grammar Nazis prescribe to us even though it doesn't actually describe the way people speak. And we'll talk more about this in just a second. But for now, it's enough to say that linguists usually rely on studying descriptive rules, and we usually view prescriptive rules as at best useless from an empirical point of view, and at worst harmful from a sociolinguistic point of view. Michael is right. It's a made-up word used to trick students. All right, now I know that sounds laughable, but this is actually one of the few times in the show that Creed comes close to being right about something. Now, the words whom and whomever have been attested parts of the English language since at least the 14th century, so they're by no means made up. But making up silly grammar rules is a long-established tradition for English-speaking grammar Nazis. And I'm just going to say it right now, a lot of the rules that you hear from your grandmother or your old school English teacher just aren't real rules of the English language. They're made up by prescriptivists, and they don't actually describe our language as it exists now. There's two main reasons that this might happen. The first is that there actually are plenty of outdated grammar rules that used to represent the way English was actually spoken. But the way we speak changes with every generation, while grammar books stay the same for far too long. And maybe you think that the way people used to speak should be considered the correct way, but languages change. This is natural, and it can't be stopped no matter how much pressure the prescriptivists try to apply. In fact, this is happening right now with the word whom. While it certainly is not a made-up word, it is dying. And you can see here that the usage of this word in books has been on a steady decline since the 1800s. And I would be willing to bet that to our great-grandchildren, this word will sound to them like how Shakespeare sounds to us now. So on the one hand, you can have good, long-established grammar rules that have just fallen out of use. But on the other hand, there are also cases of prescriptivist rules taught over the years that really are just made up, like Creed suggested, and often for very stupid reasons. For example, there's a long-established precedent in the history of the English language that says it's fine to sometimes split your infinitives. And if you don't know what that means, think of Star Trek when they say to boldly go where no man has gone before, rather than to go boldly. In this case, the infinitive to go is split by the adverb boldly. 
And many good writers split their infinitives all the time. But in the early 1800s, prescriptivist grammarians decided that you shouldn't split your infinitives. Why? Because it can't be done in Latin. Well, obviously it can't be done in Latin. Latin infinitives are one word, but English infinitives are two words, and splitting them sounds just fine to my ear. No, actually, whomever is the formal version of the word. Okay, now this is wrong, but it's funny because it's something that sounds like it could be right if you didn't know better. And what Andy is talking about here is register. Register is basically how language usage can vary within a speaker based off of circumstances or a particular reasons for speaking, as opposed to, for example, how language usage might vary between speakers based off of geography. It's why we use different words in different situations. If that's confusing, just think about this. We all know that the vocabulary of someone from London will use different words than someone from Houston. That's a difference in dialect. A difference in register would be how you would use dude to talk to one person, but sir to talk to someone else. That's not separate dialects, it's separate registers. And register exists in many different forms depending on the language. If you speak a romance language, you probably already understand how different registers can be encoded in the formal and informal pronouns in that language. And you have to know which situation to use which, because it can be really insulting if you use an informal pronoun with the wrong person. English doesn't make that kind of distinction anymore, but it used to. We used to say thou to people we wanted to respect and you to the filthy peasants. And sometimes it can get really complex. The Thai language has five registers. There's street Thai, which you use with your homies. There's written Thai, rhetorical Thai, which is used in public speaking, religious Thai, which is used to discuss Buddhism or to talk to monks, and royal Thai, which is used to address the king or his family. And going back to Andy's statement, it sure seems like the word whom is more formal than the word who, because most of us don't use it in casual speech. But that's not the whole story, because the word who is used in formal situations too. And even if you are using a more formal register, and you do use the word whom, there is still a grammatical distinction between these two words. And Pam is going to talk about that in just a second. Obviously it's a real word, but I don't know when to use it correctly. Not a native speaker. All right. Now, setting aside the fact that I believe Oscar actually is a native speaker, this is an irrelevant comment. Clearly, being a native speaker doesn't mean you understand the grammar rule, because Michael himself doesn't understand the rule. I know what's right, but I'm not going to say, because you're all jerks who didn't come see my band last night. Do you really know which one is correct? I don't know. It's whom when it's the object of the sentence and who when it's the subject. Now, just as a reminder, the subject of the sentence is the person or thing that does the action, and the object is the person or thing that has the action done to them. And what Pam said is basically right. What she's talking about here is grammatical case. Grammatical case is a way of categorizing nouns and pronouns based on how they're used in the sentence. For example, if you're looking for a pronoun that refers to a group of people, you would use the word they if they're the subject of the sentence, and them if they're the object. And we have several different word pairs that do the same thing. Who and whom follow almost exactly the same pattern. And as you can see, in English, all of the words that follow this pattern are pronouns. But it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, in many languages, regular nouns follow the same pattern. So in Greek, for example, the word paper would take three different suffixes depending on whether you used it as the subject, the direct object, or the indirect object. So we would say this noun can take the nominative case, the accusative case, or the dative case. And that's the same thing that happens in English on a much smaller scale with only our pronouns. That sounds right. Well, it sounds right, but is it? How did Ryan use it as an object? As an object. Ryan used me as an object. Is he right about that? How did he use it again? It was, Ryan wanted Michael, the subject, to uh, explain the computer system, the object. Thank you. To whomever, meaning us, the indirect object, which is the, the correct usage of the word. All right, so Toby is actually right. Here's the original sentence that Ryan said, 
and this is a pretty complicated sentence, but we can just zoom in on one simplified clause. And we see here that it was indeed the correct usage of the word. But there's another way that's often simpler to figure out the correct usage of who and whom. You just replace it in your mind with the word he or him, since these two pairs of words follow the same pattern. If you can replace it with him, then you know that you can use the word whom, because they both end in m. If you can replace it with he, then use who. If you're asking a question, then try answering the question with either he or him. Who or whom did Michael threaten? Michael threatened him. Boom, we know we have to use whom. No one uh, asked you anything ever, so whomever's name is Toby, why don't you take a letter opener and stick it in your skull? Hey, this doesn't matter. And that's all I got for this video. I hope it helped you understand the difference between who and whom and taught you some interesting linguistic principles along the way. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.